We are the strongest nation in the world today. I do not believe we should ever apply to economic, political, or military power unilaterally. If we had followed that rule in Vietnam, we wouldn't have been there. None of our allies supported us. Not Japan, not Germany, not Britain, or France. If we can't persuade nations with comparable values of the merit of our cause, we'd better re-examine our reasoning. The idea of throwing another 30,000 troops into Iraq was a desperate gamble in a dark time. And only now are we finding out just how much opposition there was to the surge among generals at the Pentagon and in Iraq. I think pushing out 300,000, 400,000 Americans out there without being able to guarantee what it will lead to is a terrible risk, a terrible problem. When this idea of a surge makes its way across the Potomac River over to the Pentagon, what do the top generals think of it? Uh, they think it won't work. And the president actually at one point goes and meets with them, and the Army Chief of Staff, General Schoomaker, says that you can't add five brigades, it will take many more. What about another crisis? We don't have troops for this. What about the damage you're doing to the force, the young kids who see nothing but endless rotations. What does General Casey, sitting in Baghdad, think of having additional troops? Uh, he thinks that Baghdad is a troop sump, a place you just you can put endless numbers of troops in. And uh, he does not want to add force. Another damn few tanks, 50,000 or 100,000 or 150,000 going to end that war. We're not getting out, but we're trying to hold what we got. And we're doing a bad, what we're doing, uh, we're, 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 we're losing it's the rate we're going. I am more and more convinced that we want to think of some action other than military action as the only program here. But I think if we do that by itself, it's suicide. The president, who has said in public endless times that he relies on his generals to tell him what they need, is actually going his own way here. That's right. Now, the records of the Joint Chiefs show that the idea of five brigades came from the White House, not from anybody except the White House. Westmoreland recommended 10 additional battalions over and above the 13 you've already authorized, something on the order of 45,000 men. I would recommend five battalions with a strength of about 25,000 men. In the back of my mind, I have a very definite uh, limitation on commitment. And I don't think we need to do but no. The War Within, published by CBS own Simon & Schuster, tracks the growing alarm inside the White House in 2006 as U.S. casualties mounted during Iraq's plunge towards civil war. The book is based on more than 150 interviews, including recorded conversations with the president. Mr. Bush told Woodward that he was frustrated with his commanders and asked for enemy body counts so he could keep score. I asked that on occasion to find out whether or not we're fighting back, because the perception is, is that our guys are dying and they're not. Because we don't put out numbers. We don't have it. We don't have a tally. On the other hand, if I'm sitting here watching the casualties come in, I'd at least like to know whether or not our soldiers are fighting. It gets so intense that in one of the secure video conferences between Washington and Baghdad, uh, the president says to Casey George, we're not playing for a tie. And this is Bush's concern that we're not going out and killing. In fact, Casey told one colleague privately that the president's view 
is almost reflective of kill the bastards, kill the bastards, and that way we'll succeed. We need somebody over there that can get us better plans than we got. What I want is somebody that can lay up some plans to trap these guys and uh, whip hell out of them, kill some of them. That's what I want to do. On July 20th, the top secret special compartmented information report that went directly to him, quotes from an intelligence report saying, violence is so out of hand, so extensive that it is self-sustaining. Woodward reports that a secret study for the Joint Chiefs of Staff in 2006 concluded that the U.S. was losing the war. But the president didn't give a hint of that in public. Absolutely we're winning. We're winning and we will win, unless we leave before the job is done. If you went to the CIA and said, how's the situation today in South Vietnam, I think they'd say it's worse. Now while we say this in private and not public, there are facts available that find their way in the press. If we're going to stay in there, we're going to go up the escalating chain. We're going to have to. It's, 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 we haven't done so yet. Why do you think that the president didn't level with the American people in this dark period in this war? Because he wanted it to work, did not want to deflate the morale of the troops, and there was political election coming up. The November 2006 congressional elections it was a raw political calculation that if you tell the public or let it get out that they are reconsidering what they're doing, uh, it, that they're acknowledging that it's not going well, all political hell would break this. Our purpose is to train these people, and our training is going good. I crawl I'll get I always thought it was foolish for you to make any statements about what's going on. I thought it was bad psychologically. But you and the president thought otherwise, and I just sat silent. I want you to dictate to me uh, some random couple of pages, uh, four letter words and short sentences on uh, the situation in Vietnam, the Vietnam picture. This morning, Senator Scott said, uh, that the war which we can neither win, lose, nor drop is evidence of an instability of ideas. A floating series of judgments, our policy of nervous conciliation, which is extremely disturbing. When you talk about the responsibility for something like the Vietnam War, whose responsibility is it? It's the president's responsibility. I don't want to fail to recognize the tremendous contribution that I think Johnson made to the, to the country. I don't want to put the responsibility for Vietnam on his shoulders alone. But I do, I am inclined to believe that Kennedy had lived. He would have made a difference. I don't think we would have had 500,000 men there.